hello, hello. I welcome you back once again to Pastor B's Kitchen Table. As you know by now, this is the spot where we chop it up, break it down, and put it back together again. As I told you many, many months ago, this is the place we come together to deal with some raw relational issues. And it's called the Kitchen Table because the Kitchen Table is the place where I grew up at in which we talked about things that were pertinent to the family. When things were real, real serious, we kind of withdrew ourselves to the Kitchen Table, moved everything away, and we started talking about things. So today we're going to talk again. And I'm so excited today not to be by myself I have a guest here today now you know for the past few weeks I've kind of been on this soapbox I've been on this on this biblical soapbox related to having a marriage that are honorable in the sight of God and protecting them from the invaders from the outside we call it a fair proof in your marriage you've heard the biblical extraction of it you've heard us talk about ways to guard against you've heard you've seen couples come in but today I've got sister Lisa Matkins here with us Alicia and she is someone who's actually been there, done that. Yeah. So Lisa, just say hello to everyone. Hello out there. Um, I just want to thank Pastor Hamilton for um, for bringing me in. I tell you, God, he knows how to appoint the perfect time and place. And I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just honored to be here today, Pastor. Amen. Thank you, yes. Lisa. Lisa, tell us your story. Well, gosh, it, it began some, I guess, 26 years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, I was unexpectedly um, knocked on the door. There was a knock and it was someone serving me divorce papers. And at that time I had been married nine years. We had a four month old and a f almost four year old. So of course um, it was a shock. I mean no marriages are perfect but I didn't see this one coming and, and I kind of, I, I kind of look at it like an earthquake, an unexpected earthquake. Immediately my um, my world was turned upside down, not only for myself but just for my my, my children. Yeah. Um, I have parents that are getting ready to celebrate 59 years of marriage so I, I was the first one in the family to kind of go down this road or at least the first one to actually be able to speak about it but mm -hmm. I was devastated. Um, devastated is not even the word, um, you know, to use. My whole world was just turned upside down, Pastor. What happened? Why? Yeah, that, yeah. That's, those are really some of the first questions I ask. And I remember closing the door, being in shock. The kids were at school. I remember dropping to my knees. And I mean, I remember crying to the core of all that I was asking why, what happened, when did this happen, how did it ever get this bad, when did it get this bad. So all of the, the whys just just started surfacing right. at, at that moment. Um, like I said, it, it, was, it, it just came from out of nowhere as if an earthquake right. had just crumbled every part of my foundation of what I knew as marriage. Right. It was crumbled in a matter of just a knock at the door. Knock at the door. Yeah. What did you discover later? Well, you know, the first thing I think that happens when you're um, delivered with devastated news is, what did I do wrong? Yeah. You know, yeah. where did I go wrong? What have I not been doing? It, 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 all eyes were on me. And, you know, as the months went by, as we packed up, I mean, it wasn't one of those file for divorce and then it happened, you know, months later. Right, right. By that weekend, I had packed up a whole house. We were out of that house, moving in with my parents. Um, and it wasn't until months later until I realized it was infidelity. It was infidelity. And at that time, I thought, what could possibly um, have gone wrong. Yeah. I, I cried. We talked. He came home. I said, let's try counseling. Right. I have um, an uncle who was a pastor at the time. We called him. I mean, I prayed and tried to do everything I can right. to try to save that marriage. And um, eventually I found out that it was infidelity and it had to do with um, the pregnancy of that relationship as well. So it was like double devastation that that happened really? as well. Yeah, so a child did come out of that relationship. So um, myself and the kids, we, we did move in with my parents. Right. I, I needed that support. Right. I needed someone to give my kids something that I couldn't give them at right. that moment. Were you open to reconciling with him? Absolutely. At that moment, um, 
I was. And I think a lot of it had to do with just the shock. Like I said, um, I called an uncle. I, I even told him, why don't we go to counseling? Yeah. You know, why don't we try to work this out? And he was just not having it. So I, I, I then began to realize it must be something deeper than um, just trying to reconcile yeah, this yeah, yeah. relationship. It, it had to be something digger, that, deeper than just him wanting out. So how did you find out about the infidelity? Well, you know, God has a great way of yeah. unfolding a story without you even investigating it. Yeah. And, and he did just that. As a matter of fact, um, his side of the family, I, I realized that summer after we... Um, you know, went through a divorce in that October, that spring, um, he brought her to a family reunion. And they were wondering, you know, what happened to, my middle name is Denise, yeah. where's Denise? Right. And here, you know, I hear stories that he brought another woman and she was pregnant. So that is actually wow. when I found out that, yeah. Yeah. that it was yeah. another child involved. Um, and um, it was another shock. When when we talk about um, what I went through, I like to describe it as PTSD, uh -huh. post-traumatic stress yeah, disorder, yeah. Um, because you, you keep reliving that moment over and over. And then on top of that, I had to continue to continue to find out information about yeah. it that was not divulged to me at the time. So I slowly found out what had really happened. Yeah. Um, which kind of alleviated some of the questions yeah, that I had yeah, had yeah. prior to it right. at the very beginning. This is just so unusual yeah. because you would have assumed that the knock at the door may have been the other woman. Absolutely. But for it to be the actual divorce papers and you not getting any wind of it leading up to it yeah. um, and then later on finding out and putting the puzzle together. Absolutely. And she's pregnant also. Yeah. Um, and there you are with your two children, yeah. with your mom, mm -hmm. um, and you got to tell us about Bounce Back. Yeah. What, yeah. what did God do to allow you? Well, I tell you, it wasn't a quick bounce back. Right. I mean, I, I was mad at everyone. I'm going to yeah. be honest with you. I was even mad at God. Yeah. You know, how could mm -hmm. you allow this to happen? Right. You know, why didn't you, um, you know, just help me to, to process that the way I want to process right, right. it at the moment. So th there was a lot of depression. There was a lot of bitterness, a lot of angry resentment. I mean, I, I, I didn't even want to see the sight of him. And yeah, by this time, yeah. they were living together, and um, we were sharing custody of the kids. So every time I dropped them off, I would have to see him and her. So right, right. the bounce back was not a, tr a smooth transition yeah. for me. It, it really did take a, a long time, and um, God had to just catch me because yeah, I, yeah, I, I was yeah. starting to fall apart. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I was starting to go to places I shouldn't yeah, have gone yeah. because you know what? I, I my identity was in that marriage. Mm -hmm. You know, my mm -hmm. identity was in the marriage, and. I just felt like I was just worthless then. Right, right. So it was a lot of self-blame. So God let me go out there and hit wow. my head for a while. And he slowly started reeling me in. And um, I, I started going to Bible study. Yeah. I started going to groups for women um, of betrayal. Right. Um, I was real friends with a, a, a woman who was almost, you know, double my age. Yeah. She walked with me right. through it. And I realized that, you know, God causes all things for good. Yeah. I, I had to really surrender that with God and get back right with God. Wow. Lisa, you just touched on something. I want to just pull over and park just for a minute. You just made the statement that your identity was in that marriage. Yeah. Explain that for, yeah. our, for our viewers, please. Yeah. Well, you know, Pastor, um, we, we get lost sometimes in our marriage. Um, my total trust was in him, yeah. was was in a man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and not that we shouldn't trust our spouse, but, you know, I didn't realize and recognize until my divorce that my trust is totally in the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he's my protector, and, yeah. and he's yeah. the one yeah. to um, guide my path. And, you know, it, it's kind of like my grandmother, she's from Louisiana, she used to make this homemade cake. Yeah. And, it was just good, just like it was, right. coming out the oven, eating it hot right there. And <laughs> I realized that my trust in my husband right. was that icing. Okay. You know, okay. whether he 
I send it or not, that trust yeah. was in the Lord it's like good. that. Yeah. So yeah. I, I come to realize that I was trusting the wrong man at the yeah. time, yeah. and therefore I was um, I was not seeing a lot of the signs that God was mm. probably showing me deep yeah. into yeah. the relationship right. when it was really being tearing apart before right. that happened. Right. Right. So um, it, it was a rough road. Yeah. It, it really was a rough road, but, you know, I, I'm here to... to I'm living proof that God is real. Yeah. I mean, He is close to the brokenhearted, and I, I was yeah, one yeah. broken. I was one broken person then, yeah. and it, it has been a journey back. Yeah, it yeah. really has been a journey back. Now you got remarried. Yes, I did. Man. Well, you know, Pastor. After that happened, I said I was never getting married again. Right. I mean, that's how hurt I was. I, I would never trust again. I mean, I had basically set up my whole life for me. I was just going to raise my girls, go on with my life and my career. Right. And God had someone behind the scene right. that I didn't even know that was right. there. And um, about um, two and a half years after my divorce, I, I, I met the most godliest man. And, yeah. you know, I remember two weeks after I met him, he said, God told me I was going to marry you. Yeah. And I told him, I said, well, we need to break this relationship because yeah. I'm never getting married again. Yeah, yeah. And he told me at that moment, I'm going to wait until God shows you. Right, right. So I waited two years until God placed it in my heart. What are you doing? Yeah, this is the yeah. man I have chosen and picked for you. So um, we've been married. It was 22 years we celebrated in August. Wow, we've, 20, at this church, right, at Friendship, wow, that's where we got married. 22 years. And we dated two years before that, and um, we raised three beautiful right, right. children. Um, our oldest is 31, and we have a 30 and a 26-year-old. And I tell you, if, if, if there was not a man that God planted to right, show right, my right, daughters right. that they are daughters of a king right. and that they are deserving of a king, yeah. he's the one who he set that for them. Now, Lisa, a question I've got for you yes. is how did you prevent from him in pain, from him paying for the sins of your first husband. Pastor, that was not easy. Yeah. As a matter of fact, when God gave me him, it's like he had already given him everything that he needed to be able to um, sustain being in the relationship right. with him right. because that was the issue very early in yeah. our marriage. Yeah. You know, there was definitely no trust. Um, you know, I would question where he is, who he's with, who he's yeah. talking yeah. with. Um, so through some more extensive counseling right. um, that we went through that when we were in Austin, yeah. uh, I'm sorry, in Georgia, we went through some extended um, counseling, and it was on our identity in Christ. Okay. And it was not until I really came to recognize who I am in Christ apart from anything yeah. else yeah. that I could learn to start trusting yeah. again and loving again and wow. just basically mm. just giving my whole self to my husband. As a matter of fact, I tell people I trust him more than I did the first husband. Yeah. That's nothing wow. but God. Wow. And that has to do with everything with um, with my identity. I mean, I know who I am. But it's, it's, it's a healthy trust. It's now. a healthy trust. Yeah. yeah. I, I know yeah. that my trust is totally in the Lord. But I also know that as long as I'm connected right. to him, right. he's going to be able to show me the cracks right. Right. that's happening in our right. marriage. Right. Right. So I can, you know, so we can do something early right. about it. Right. So uh, that is where I've kept my focus right. for right. these 24 years right. that, you know, we've been together in the 22 years of, right. of my marriage. Um, to him, so um, I, I tell you, that's my baby. Yeah. <laughs> that is my baby. <laughs> now, listen. Now, there, there's someone who's watching us, mm -hmm. and they may not have encountered um, a a physical affair with someone, but mm -hmm. but someone they love, whether their, their husband or their wife, has had an emotional affair yeah. with someone, and they're having real trust issues. Like yeah. you were saying, where are you? Who you're talking to? Where you go? Uh, am able to track you on your phone and all that Absolutely. kind of stuff. What, what? How would you speak to that man or that woman yeah. right now? Really, they're in a relationship and they're not going anywhere. Right. But man, they got some serious trust yeah, issues. Yeah. You know, a, a lot of people don't realize, but emotional affairs are affairs. Yeah. Um, yeah. Statistics shows that eventually they're going to become physical yeah. affairs. Yeah. Um, anytime you're sharing an intimate conversation with someone you have basically broken the wedding vow, wow, the marriage wow, vow. You, wow, you really have. And, yeah. and as you know, 
it is a covenant with the Lord. So yeah. you have already committed the act. Yeah, yeah. So um, the best thing that, that I tell clients that I work with is the first thing we have to work through is forgiveness. Yeah. You know, these are two people that's coming yeah, together. Yeah. They really want the marriage to work. They didn't realize how the emotional attachment right. and the emotional um, attachment bond to someone can actually... Um, mm devastate, destroy the marriage. Right, right, they just right. think that they're just having a healthy conversation. But what I tell them is, even if you think it's healthy, you don't know where the other person yeah, is in their yeah, marriage or yeah, in their relationship. Yeah. So it does. It, it brings up betrayal. It brings up loss of trust. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of a sudden, there's a lack of trust in the marriage. And we have to come clean with that. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's the same kind of discovery as a physical right, um, right, discovering right. that emotional Attachment. What, what counsel would you would you give to the one who's under the scrutiny, the one who who is being uh, who does, is not trusted, and, and what would you give to the one that's really struggling yeah. uh, with the trust itself? Yeah. Well, one of the things that I do is um, I work with another um, male counselor. Right. He's a Christian. He handles the one that's under scrutiny, okay. the one who's committed the act. Okay. And I work with the partner. Working with partners was birthed out of my own experience. Yeah. I have a heart for partners. Yeah. And what we do is we come together as as his therapist and I come to represent her and we start meeting together. Okay. And I start finding out with the partner, what is it that you need to move okay. forward? Okay. And meanwhile, he's working with the, the male or the right, female right. and who committed the act and how they can resolve this. Yeah. And part of it is done through what we call a disclosure. Okay, okay. That means that that person is willing mm -hmm. to come clean yeah, with everything. Yeah, yeah. Because see, when you get caught in the act, you only tell that partner what you think they need to hear. Yeah, yeah. Majority of the time, it's never the full truth. Yeah. So we call it the right of truth. Okay, okay, okay. That's when you come clean with everything. And meanwhile, while they are working with their counselor right. on that, I'm working with the partner on what is it that she needs to know. Okay, because okay. not everything needs to be disclosed. Right, right, you know, right, right. some of the more intimate things, right. because that's part of the traumas that now mm -hmm. you're starting to visualize that. Yeah, and it really yeah. hinders the relationship yeah, from going yeah. forward. So we discuss the positive ways of moving forward. What is it that you need to know? So that's how we start. We start after the discovery, we start with a disclosure, which can take anywhere from up to two to three months. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we really work with that and we really bathe Amen. it in prayer and Amen. we really work with forgiveness yeah. and reconciliation yeah. and all of that. So it's not something that just happens overnight. And most of the time, the the person who commits the act, they just want it to be over. Yeah, you know, it's yeah, like, yeah. okay, I've acknowledged it. Mm. I've asked for forgiveness. Yeah, yeah. Can we just move just forward? Move for, yeah, but yeah. what they don't realize is that that partner has experienced some trauma. Yeah, PTSD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a shock to the right, system. To the system. Right. And that is something that you cannot just get over. Right, so right. we tell them from the beginning that short of God working in this, yeah. we're looking at a good three to four years to really work through all of this. And um, to get them, yeah. not to what they used to have, right. because what they used to have has been destroyed. Yeah, yeah. So what they're wanting to experience is God setting them up a whole new foundation, yeah, a whole yeah, new marriage yeah. for them to grow on. And the majority of our couples, they've never experienced marriage like they have yeah. after they've gone through all of this restoration. And it's all built on the Word of God. It's all built on the Word of God. It's all built. There's no other way yeah. it can go. You know, at least you've been saying that God blessed you with a with a mate. God blessed you with a brand new marriage. Yes. But there's something else. God's given you a ministry. Absolutely. You're in a ministry. Absolutely. Talk to him about your yes, ministry. Yes, yes. Well, you know, God called me to go back to school. Pastor, I know it's been some 15 years ago. Yeah. And I cried and I fought and I thought, you know what? I'm almost 50. There's no way I can go back to school. Yeah. So, um... God has a way of making things more complicated. Yeah, yeah. The job that I was on teaching, it became more difficult. Right. And then one day I said, you know what? I'm going to have to trust you like I've trusted you in this marriage to yeah. go back to school. So I went back to school. I, I received a Master of Arts in Marriage and Family Therapy okay. because I love working with the family systems right. because when our marriages are destroyed, the entire family is yeah. affected yeah. by it. Yeah. 
I went back to school and in 2013 I graduated from Liberty University, okay. Christian based, solid in the word. Yeah. Um, I knew that I had to reach people by way of God. Yeah. That was the only yeah. Yeah. reason I went right. to Liberty. Right. And um, I have worked in churches and private practices yeah. for the last seven or eight years. And God has been calling me to go into private practice for the last three years. Okay. And again, yeah. I fought that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I tell you, God did not give us a, a, a spirit of fear. Right. And right. I, I knew that that was coming from the enemy. Yeah. So we moved to Austin last year, um, year before last. We've relocated back yeah. to the... Um, Richmond area yeah. and God laid it on my heart. Okay, what are yeah. you waiting yeah. for? Yeah. So I, I took the biggest leap of faith I think I've ever taken yeah. in my entire yeah. life yeah. Um, to, to work this ministry and it is just that I, I know in, in the state of Texas I have to call it um, a licensed professional counselor yeah. and I am licensed but it is a ministry to me yeah. basically yeah. what I do with couples individual adolescents is that we are I, I basically disciple them yeah, yeah. Wow. it's, it's truly wow. a discipleship program um, that the ministry that I'm in and so I just opened up a new practice right. in Sugarland yeah. it's um, it's at 77 Sugar Creek Center um, Sweet Say that again. Six, uh, Say that again. 77 Sugar Creek Center Boulevard mm -hmm. Suite 600 mm -hmm. and it's called the Compass Center for wellness okay. and I am a PLLC mm -hmm. and I'm also licensed and um, I can also be reached on psychology today yeah. they can find out all of my information right. go to my website right. um, my phone numbers are on both lo locations right. of yeah. that I am there Monday through Friday yeah. um, I do charge but I do you know have a sliding scale right. according right. to how God wants me to meet that individual need right. Right. And, you know, Pastor, I, I'm just there to meet people where they are, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. Sometimes um, couples choose to stay in the marriage right. after the discovery, That's and right. I'm there for that support. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm there for those that choose to That's not stay. Right. That's right. That's so right. wherever you are in life, I'm there to help you navigate yeah, yeah. down that path that God so set up for us because wow. he does have that perfect yeah, plan yeah. for us. Wow. Yes. That is, that is just awesome, man, just your transparency and how you haven't sugarcoated this is saying I was this and now look what I am now. Yeah. No, it was a process yeah. and it was a maturation. It was God was, was maturing you and taking you through. Yeah. And even as he's matured you, he, he keeps bringing you to more and more Red Sea experiences. Absolutely. You got to trust him again. Absolutely. You got to trust him in the marriage. You got to trust him going to school. You got to trust him now for your bad, for your practice. You gotta Absolutely. You got to trust him for your clients. And That's right. You got to trust it, it's, him for it's all, that. all I, I tell my clients all the time, I, the therapist, have my own therapist. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm not immune <laughs> to my own issues. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm married. I have adult kids. Yeah. I have everyday situations. Yeah. I have to have someone, too, yeah. that I can process this yeah. with. Yeah. Not only that, I have to be in the Word. Yeah. You know, I'm constantly taking up classes right. on right. biblical, you know, theories, right. Right. on um, different um, disorders right. Right. that's going on. That changes every day. I'm in a woman's Bible study. Yeah. I mean, I'm constantly being fed. So, so Lisa, you're saying that's radical, that when it comes to the issue of marriage and family and life and identity and struggles and trauma yes. that the word of God brings healing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And like I said, even though I know the clinical terms right, for right. bipolar depression, everything is seen through the lens of God's word. That's yeah, where I go yeah, first. Yeah. Because if anyone has discovered in the Bible, yeah. it's all there. Yeah. Depression is there. Yeah. Anxiety is there. Yeah. So I go and seek God's right. word first. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, um, I, and I seek the psychology part of it, yeah. the yeah. clinical part yeah. of it, because a lot of times there is a chemical imbalance. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there is something that's going right. on. Right. But the hope is always in the Lord. In the Lord yeah. It's always in the Lord. No matter what they... Um, have told you at that assessment, yeah. we can always trust that God yeah. is going to use that yeah. for good to yeah. pull us out yeah. of it. Yeah, and it's all through the body of Christ. One of my favorite sayings in the church is that 
Everything we need is in the body. Absolutely. It's in the house. Absolutely. And not being what you're saying, that God's already prepared uh, gifted men and gifted women, call men, call women, who can address the needs that we have, whatever it may be. Whatever it may be. We live in a fallen world. And yes. It's living in a fallen world. There's going to be chaos and confusion and conflicts and divisions, yes. but yet the Word of God brings healing. That's right. And God uses people. The Word, the Word of God tells us about that, that we, we rejoice with those who are rejoicing and That's we right. weep with those who are weeping. Absolutely. And I'm sure that in this kind of ministry you have, you got to do both. Absolutely. You got to do both. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So it, it does, Pastor. It, it brings hope. And, you know, I, I try to, to, to explain to people that we have to learn how to die to all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, you know, and I love yeah. what Galatians 2.20 yeah, says. Yeah, yeah. It is not I who live, but yeah, Christ who lives. lives. Yes, I yeah, love yeah, that yeah. verse because... It is. In order to be restored, yeah. we have to die to some things yeah. that yeah. we have been yeah. using really as a stronghold yeah. our yeah. entire lives that we have really wow. brought yeah. into the marriage. Yeah. Yeah. See, yeah. we don't realize the baggage we bring yeah. into yeah. the marriage yeah. both individuals bring. Yeah. So we do have to be um, renewed. Our minds have to re yeah. be renewed yeah. daily in right. the Word. Yeah. Um, you know, I always say God designed marriages not to be okay. Yeah. He designed them to be victorious. Amen. He Amen. designed marriages to be victorious. Amen. Amen. And that's how we should be life for the world yeah. and showing other people that marriage Amen. is a good thing. It's a good thing. It's Amen. a good thing. Amen. You must have been listening to me preach. Oh, really? My, that's what I've been preaching. Oh, really? It's a great thing because, yes, because, because you hear so many, so many you know, muley mouth stories or and, and, and the things that God is doing yes. doesn't mean everything's right. Absolutely. But what God is doing on the inside, the neighbors of hell are outside, mm -hmm. you don't hear those stories so yeah. many times. And we need to hear those stories that, Absolutely. hey, marriage still works done God's way. Absolutely. And God has made us be more than conquerors through Christ mm -hmm. Jesus. And mm -hmm. that applies in our relationship. It absolutely does. So, so you've got the final floor. So what would you want to tell some man or some woman listening to you today, and they're on the fence, wondering what should they do? Because now they've discovered that there has been a break in the covenant. What yeah. would you say? Yeah. Well, you know, I use that analogy a lot in my sessions. You know, you're going to have a very sore bottom sitting straddling that fence. you got to get <laughs> off one way or yeah, the other. Yeah. And, you know, to those that say that they love God and they yeah. trust him, it's time to start putting the rubber to the road. Yeah. You know, we can't just say that we trust God, we have to actually start walking that out. Yeah. So to those that are questioning, hey, um, you know, is it worth it? Yeah. You know, can I do it? And I'm saying, no, you can't do it, but Christ can do it through yeah. you. Yeah. He just needs your total commitment. Yeah. That's all yeah. he needs, yeah. you know. Yeah. And I always say, leave all the consequences to God. Hmm. Fight for your marriage. Yeah. Fight yeah. for your marriage. Yeah. Um, that's why I'm sitting where I am today because yeah. my husband and I, we fought against all of the statistics that shows that second marriages are not going to work. Yeah. And then God turned right around after he healed our marriage and he used it in a ministry that we even have to yeah. help couples yeah. and married yeah. people, you know. So God has a great way of using all things for for good yeah. for those, of course, who loves him. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're straddling that fence, I say... Give it another try, Yeah. you know, mm -hmm. but this time give it 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Give it all to God and just do your part in it because we do have a part to play in yeah. this. And just trust God in it. Trust him. Wow. Yeah. wow. Trusting God trust in it. Trust the Lord. There it is. There it is. You've heard it. And she's telling you the actual 411. She's told you the real details. She has not minimized anything. She told you exactly what it is. So you see that through the power of the Word of God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, for the glory of God, it can happen. Yes. It's not strange what you're going through. It's not strange what has happened to you. But I'm telling you, God meant for you to be more than just someone who's a victim. God meant for you to be victorious. Yes. I trust Christ, and I encourage you today to decide today is for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Go tell somebody. Tell your mama. Amen. Tell your daddy. Share us with somebody. Amen. Go tell them. Come look. See what's happening here at Pastor B's kitchen table. Yes. We love you. We thank God for you. And may you get ready for God to use you and blow your mind. See you next week here at the kitchen table.